All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. This is Tam Dang, and I'm speaking to you live from my home here in, uh, actually, my dad's home here in Brisbane, Australia. I just got back uh, a couple of nights ago. I'm still wearing the exact same clothes that I was wearing when I went to uh, Denver because my luggage is still in LA. <laughs> I'm wait waiting for it to come to me. Um, but you know, but we did a we did a hangout yesterday, and we're doing another another one today. And um, uh, Denver is still you know hovering above my head. It's still here. It's still it hasn't left me yet. I don't want it to leave me because I had such a magical. Uh, time in Denver, fantastic time with so many good friends, online friends, uh, the ones that you see here on the panel, and uh, you know to 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 speak to these guys online for three months and then to see them in person it was just so wonderful, just to hang out, just to be in their presence. Uh, it was just it was just all that I could ask for, and that is what this business is all about. You know, being able to make money. And then get out there and have fun, hang out with your friends who are all the way across the world. Have have a beer, have some food, uh, catch up, share some 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 just simple things. And that's what this is all about. But I know for a fact these guys, they're all they all have big hearts. When they go home, each one of them take massive actions towards building their business. No one you see on this panel actually slacks. Everybody in on this panel actually inspire other people, and that's what I love about friends like these. Um, you know, a long time ago, I uh, actually about uh, about seven years ago, I was just a kid, a regular kid who really did nothing for other people except to think about myself. All I wanted was entertainment. You know, I would I would I have an entourage of friends where we would go out uh, to the to the pub and drink, and we would um, you know smoke uh, cigarettes, smoke weed, and just sort of have fun, you know, and destroying ourselves from the inside out. And, uh, and you know, something happened when I was, when I hit 20 years old. My mind opened up, and I started hearing voices in my head. And for the first time, I was like, I was like, what the hell is this, you know? I was, <laughs> it, was just, it was like, it was like, who are you? you know? And then I started hearing other people's voices, so many voices in my head, and I couldn't control this. And what happened was I had to, I started to look into books, uh, uh, reading, you know, a, 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 every single day. I started listening to audios. I started to just trying to figure out what the hell this is, you know. And um, and because the more I'm listening to other people's voices, the more, uh, you know, self-doubt I had, the more... Uh, the more uh, low self-esteem I was creating for myself, and all, all sorts of sort of trouble inside of me was brewing up. And um, but you know, for for the last seven years, I've always dreamed about you know um, inspiring other people. I've always I've always looked up to guys like Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, all those guys, and I had you know dreams about being those guys. And I realized a long time ago that. The only way for me to have friends like that or to be around those circle is to create and turn myself into someone like that. Right? It's the only way for those guys to 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 have me around their circles if I vibrate those kind of energy. Right? Nobody's just gonna come and grab me, this uh, this this kid out of nowhere and put me in their circle. I have to create um, this for myself. I have to work hard and and I have to go towards that way and and. And the thing I love about what we're doing right now is everybody, right, inside this company. I'm talking about every single one of uh, you on this panel and everyone inside of Empower. We are all have the exact same mentality. We all want, you know, to 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 be uh, come great. You know, we all seek excellence and greatness, and that's what I love about friends like these. And I can't, uh, uh, I can't, you know, um, you know, thank the universe enough. You know, uh, to allow me to be in this position right now and to have friends like these. But um, you know, tonight we have a very, very special guest, and uh, you know, we we have the privilege to meet her in uh, in Denver. We've got her on here. She's a pro copywriter. She does copywriting for the the one and only Prosperity Team. She she does so much more. Um, we're gonna get to hear her story tonight. And towards the end of this hangout, if you hang around till the end, she's gonna share. Um, you know some of her secrets. Uh, you know she's going to give you some of the um, some of the uh, things that works for her and what doesn't work for her in terms of copywriting and how she's able to 
get like you know 67 percent open ranks and stuff like that so it's really really cool and if you hang around and if you get a little bit of this it's gonna help your business tremendously I, I can almost guarantee that um, but before we get to Asa we uh, will just you know go through the panel introduce the guys my the, the 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 Denver hype is still around I wonder if you guys you know are still feeling the same thing we're gonna um, I don't know if Tin's there Tin are you there at the moment all right, we're just gonna go straight to Howard. Um, first of all, Howard, um, just you know, introduce yourself and uh, whatever's on your mind. Just um, share that before we get to Asa. Sure, Howard Barr uh, down here in South Florida, coming off uh, quite a high. Uh, had the pleasure of you know spending a lot of time with uh, pretty much everybody on the panel. It's actually except for except for Alan, we missed Alan. Uh, and uh, you know it it it, uh, it was really great to actually you know meet everybody that uh, you know we spend this time online with and uh, you know we, we we bond with online but it's it's it is actually fantastic that we we get to get together and uh, you know and bond and, and share ideas in, in person and you know take that time to you know get get together and, and do things with which is which is kind of kind of fun uh, you know one of the things that uh, you know come off is that we we uh, we what is that chit chit I hear in the back? Someone needs to be muted. I don't know what it is. Anyway, so we uh, we you know we we get in Denver and we hear a lot of principles. We hear a lot of ideas, and uh, you know there's a lot of excitement from from being there. Uh, you know there's a lot of new things that are coming out that uh, definitely you know give us some things to think about and some some things to roll roll into, and uh, you know. Those sometimes we scramble and say, "What do we do first? Where do we go from here? You know, what what's the first thing to do?" And I can honestly say that, um, you know, I made some commitments to some people when I was in Denver. Uh, you know, I I I you know I said I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, and I said, you know, I you know I'm full of it if I don't do those things. And and honestly, I came home and I stuck to exactly what I said I was going to do. Uh, and and actually, Tien, who's on the piano panel, I, I made a commitment to her, which actually I have a, a sheet for her to, to show her that I've actually made a goal sheet. Uh, I've written it down. I've put a plan together of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Uh, and you know, these are things that are are serious if we want to achieve what we actually you know where we want to go. Uh, you know, it's it's very very simple in our life to say you know I want to make X amount of dollars or you know. I want to have a house, or I want to have a car, or I want to, you know, do what it is what we want to do. But to actually know how you're going to going to do it and the road that you need to do it is a lot more important. And and uh, the other thing is to actually share it with somebody and have being held accountable to do that is even more important. And to have somebody that you know, holds you accountable and make them a partner in your life of of sharing that goal with you and and getting a checkpoint. Makes it even more important to get there, and that's something that uh, you know is is another bonding point of you know of someone who becomes a like mind, and a, you know of people that you meet in a business you know that we do all together, is that we all actually know what we do, we all know what type of you know what type of goals that we all share, and and in and in some sense it's it's pretty similar, you know we all we all have that we may have something all different that we all want to attain. Uh, we all may have a different amount of money that we may want to get. We all may, you know, have something different in that aspect. Uh, you know, it may be a relationship that we want to mend. It may be some a weight that we either want to achieve that we want to lose, uh, or something like that. But, but in general, we all have the same vehicle that we want to use to get there. And and so we can actually, as a team, bond together and hold each other accountable with that. And that's something that. Uh, is you know, I mean, I've worked in several other businesses that you somewhat had that, but you know, the road wasn't the same, uh, and the people, in some essence, weren't the same. And that's something that I found, you know, with this company is that you know we meet we meet online, we talk to each other online, and then we meet you know every three months, and we form relationships that become you know brotherhood, sisterhoods. Uh, Things that you just don't find with other companies. It's just something that is incredible, and you know that's that's something I said I wanted to share with Tian is that I, I've actually stuck to what I said I was going to do. I have it. I want to uh, share it with you, you know, the next day or so or whatever. I'll, but I do have it for you. 
Uh, and you know that's that's something that's you know, fantastic. And I've but I've done nothing but put together my plan and I'm working it. Uh, whether it's has been entirely uh, you know successfully on the path yet, it's only a day or two into it. Uh, that's you know it is what it is at this point. But I'm working it, and and that's and that's where it goes. And it will it will flow right into where it, you know where it where it's planned. So you know, that's that's what I have to say as far as as far as you know where I'm going. Uh, but you know, like I said, it, it's it's a fantastic method. Is that you know where you're going, you have a vision, and you follow that vision. And and uh, you know, that's what I saw in Denver. That was my key idea: is that I knew where I saw my vision, and I know where I'm going. And I'm able to share it with the people that have like minds as I do. Yeah, awesome. I've seen that you've been taking massive action since you've come back, and I'm glad whatever the uh, the event has done something for you, and I'm glad it did. And uh, and you know, you mentioned brotherhood and sisterhood. That sounds like a cult to me. But um, <laughs> I leave it at that. I will. Hey, Tim. Hey, Tim um, did you want to introduce yourself a little bit there? Yeah. Thank you, Tam. Um, yeah. Sorry, I've I've got a house full of kids. So I'll be sort of trying to <laughs> accommodate both of them. Um, yeah. I'm Tian Lee from Melbourne, Australia. Um, yeah, I'm still on a high from, even though I'm jet lagged, I'm still on a high from um, from Denver and just, you know, being around all you amazing people and, you know, having the chance to meet Isa, you know, it was just like a flick on the very last night, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that and we we um, we um met up and we were drinking and we just, we just hit it off, like straight away, we just like had a, this instant connection and I, I, I just love it, you know, and these are the sort of things, you know, if you don't go to the events, which is, you know, one of our eight core commits, Commitments. If you don't go to the events, you never have the opportunity to meet people like this. You know, I wouldn't have met Isa if I didn't go to Denver, and you know, I wouldn't have met Tam if I didn't go to Austin. So you know, it all falls. It all comes back to um, going to the events. Um, for me, I started marketing um, online about a year ago. Um, a year before that, so two years ago, I actually resigned from my corporate job because I was sick of not having freedom, having a life of freedom, of you know being able to do what I want when I want um, and being my own boss. And the thing I, that drew me to online marketing was I can do this from you know anywhere in the world you know because I love to travel so I can take my job with me and it's not something that I have to do you know nine to five or something I can do that if I chose to like a couple of hours a day but at the moment I just really love what I'm doing and I'm just um, taking action on a lot of the things that I'm learning so you know it's, it doesn't feel like work you know I, I can't believe that <laughs> You know, we we actually could have so much fun and get paid for it at the same time because you know we're following what we're told to do and um, getting results from it. So, um, absolutely stoked that I'm on the panel with all these awesome marketers, and I'm really looking forward to what Isa has to share with us because she said she shared a lot with us on you know on the night that we um we caught up, and she just absolutely blew my mind with how talented she is. She just like speaks copy. <laughs> it just it just comes so naturally to her, and you know. It's poetry, like that's her form of poetry. And I just uh, was just sucking it all up when I was with her. So I'm um, looking forward to hanging out with you again in three months' time, Isa. <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, um, yeah. With that, I'm going to hand the mic back over to you. Today. Awesome. I remember after the last event, you came home and you you created a blog post. It was about jet lag, and I thought that was pretty cool, right? I'm not sure if you're getting any leads or, or sales from that yet, but um, that's what this is about. You can pretty much blog about whatever you want. It's really, really cool. Uh, we're going to move, jump, uh, skip Howard now. We're going to jump over to Emily. Uh, hey, Emily, how are you doing? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. I'm doing great, and uh, it's, it's good to be on and seeing everybody here again. Um, I'm really excited about, about tonight's Hangout, you know, when... Uh, uh, Tian said that she brought on, uh, she's going to bring on Isa, uh, who's an extremely talented copywriter. Guys, if you're watching this and you're really wondering why you haven't been able to convert your emails or have an open rate, you know, you're definitely at the right time and at the right place because Isa's going to be sharing some of her ninja mar uh, strategies here. If you do stay tuned in and uh, stick, uh, stick around, 
um, because there's definitely going to be a lot of values being dropped down. Uh, my name is Emily Nguyen, guys, and uh, I've been in the internet marketing world for less than a year now, and it's created wonders for me. I love connecting with like-minded people and uh, helping others create a, a, a freedom lifestyle that they've always wanted, whatever that means to you. You know, whether if you're watching this, if there's a reason to it. Whether you're looking to have more time with your family, your friends, your loved ones, whether you're, 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 he, you're looking to travel more, whatever that may be, uh, you are on the right hangout. So um, stay informed, uh, bring out your notepad, your pen, your paper, and uh, jot down all these golden bars that's going to be, that, that's gonna be um, given out, right? Um, so I'm from Montreal, Canada, by the way. Uh, for those who don't know, and uh, I'm just going to keep it moving here because we are with uh, within a time frame. So um, pass it back down, pass it back on to you, Tom. Awesome. Um, yeah, you're, you're so right about copywriting. I'll, I'll touch a little bit on that, on my perspective <clears throat> about copywriting in a second. But uh, now we just we just jump straight to Doug. Um, how you doing, Doug? It was great to see you in Denver. Uh, well, I'm doing great, Tom. Can you hear me? Okay. Sure. Cool, 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 cool. I just wanted to say I'm looking forward to Aza um, speaking about copywriting. It's an area I definitely need to improve on, and I'm uh, I'm gonna be all ears tonight. And uh, you can drive traffic, uh, but absolutely you need to have uh, good emails, good autoresponders. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be all ears. I really want to hear the uh, golden nuggets that she has to share tonight. Uh, we had a chance to hang out really in the wee hours of, uh, I guess it would be Wednesday morning uh, of this last week in Denver, and she was just a blast. Um, and I believe uh, that uh, <laughs> in writing emails, you really need to bring out your personality and really bring out yourself and just be totally authentic so the person reading the emails is going to get a sense of who you are. And I believe that's exactly what she does. So I'm anxious to hear what she has to say tonight. Uh, as far as uh, Denver and uh, having a chance to hang out with uh, just everybody here on the panel, including um, Alan was watching it on um, the live stream and we were uh, bouncing messages back and forth on Facebook and stuff so I still felt like I was connecting with Alan during the weekend too so even though he wasn't there physically I felt like we were connecting uh, through the to the internet so that was cool so I thought he was there in spirit as well and it was really good to connect with um, uh, Tam to the very last uh, day I was there uh, we went out for pizza and uh, what I like about Tam is uh, he's a good accountability partner for me because um, he doesn't lit up. Like we are actually having pizza together and, he, and we are going through the process of discovering your why. And while we are having pizza together, he was going through the steps, you know, what, what is it that I want out of the business and why am I in the business? We are eating pizza together and he was still asking me those questions even uh, though he was going to get in a cab uh, to go to the airport to go back to Australia probably about a half an hour to an hour later. We are still talking about the business and holding each other accountable and he was like my accountability partner so I really appreciate that. So anyway, I'm going to keep this short. <laughs> I'm going to pass this back to you, Tam. And by the way, I just wanted to make the comment, you kind of look like the millionaire monk now with your hood on. You know, that's actually a pretty cool touch. That's really a good good thing that really, you really do look like the millionaire monk with that hood on. <laughs> back to you. Cool, cool. No, I have to put it on. To, uh, <laughs> To, to have the uh, impression that I, I am shaved and bald, and I look at you, and I gotta be—I have to be accountable because you look like my senior monk. So. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, well, we're gonna go to uh, to Alan. Um, he wasn't—he wasn't able to join us uh, in Denver, but um, as Doug mentioned, he was on the live stream. He was actually there. Every <laughs> time he couldn't make it because there was, a, uh, there was obviously some other. <laughs> But uh, Alan, how are you doing? And and how was it like, you know, watching everything through the live stream? Well, hey Tam, my name is Alan Luke from Toronto. Well, actually, um, obviously, I missed you know the massive energy, all the late late night you know <laughs> hangout, going to bar, getting drunk, and all that good stuff. So obviously, I cannot miss the next event, guys. You have to go to the next event. I so regretted it that I could not go, but obviously, I 
did invest in my future, and therefore I actually got the live stream. So I was actually listening in the whole weekend, just really absorbing all the information that the leaders drop. And we all know in 60 days something big, something monumental is coming along, and you guys do not want to miss this uh, at all. So, uh, Tam, for the last several years, uh, you know, I have been uh, involved with this industry, but I have been really just lacking a lot of clarity, really just hating every part of it because I don't know why, but I see a lot of people making a lot of money, but me. So. At the beginning, I was, you know, so confused. I thought it was the, you know, my upline. I thought it was the program. I thought it was so many things. I was blaming a lot of people, but myself. The moment that I realized that I am actually the person that can control my own destiny, I'm the only person that can really make an impact on my end result. That's when I start to really, you know, start to get clarity in myself. Uh, I remember that. Um, the first personal development I was introduced to was the, the Secret. It was a DVD given to me by a friend. And that moment on, I became uh, the student of the industry. I became really, you know, just really be a studious every single day to learn how I can become better a version of myself. It was uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, a few months ago when, when, when I was actually going up into uh, Miami. Uh, to attend the mastermind event with Dave and Dave, and I got to hang out with some of the, you know, six, seven, eight figures earner, on the yacht, on a private yacht. And on the yacht, you know, it was it was amazing uh, journey. Um, I was overlooking the water, really, you know, just really just embracing uh, the warmth, the sun just hitting my face, really just hearing, you know, the water crashing against the yacht, and also people around me, you know, just drinking, yelling, laughing. But as I close my eyes, um, really just kind of visualizing what's going to happen in the next 60, 90 days, and also really just looking back to the last several years that you know I've been really been struggling, really been uh, you know many times wanted to give up. But at that moment, I kind of realized myself that those were actually not really failures. Uh, you know, I tend to think it was. It was actually many different lessons that I learned along the way to become the person I am today. And I'm actually very grateful now to having go through all these struggles because if it, if, because if it wasn't for all these struggles, I would not become the person I'm today. I'm, I'm, right now I'm still learning, still developing, still trying to grow every single day. And the first thing I really you know, start to, uh, to, to see in this whole industry is obviously as Vic said over the weekend, is you have to build your foundation right. It's all about, you know, putting positive information in your head, and that's how you build a foundation. You see, for for the last several years, I'm building my business. It's like a Jenga, right? So every single time I'll build it up, and it falls down. Every single time it's like that. So now, um, you know, for the last 90 days, I'm actually beginning to build a very solid foundation from the ground up. And now, now I'm actually starting to master the traffic gener you know, generation, I'm starting to master uh, communication. So that's why I'm very excited tonight to hear, uh, you know, Isa, you know, she's an amazing copywriter. She's gonna, she's able to actually influence people through words, through messages. I mean, that's the art of actually communication, through influence. And if you're able to master the skill, you can really able to take your business to new heights. So I'm really excited tonight to learn exactly a few things can alter human emotions and alter the way a person can take action and action to reach, you know, to reach their dream. So uh, with that said, uh, I'm going to pass it on to you so we can hear Isa's story and how she can able <laughs> to really just influence a lot of people in a positive way. So Tam, back to you. Awesome, Alan. It's always uh, a pleasure listening to you talk. Um, you know, what I just want to mention very quickly, like one of the things that you're talking about, failures, um, it's not actually a, a failure. You have not failed unless you've decided to quit. And one of the reasons I, I struggled for the last, you know, four years online as well is because I refuse to look into copywriting. It's because I refuse to learn the art and the skill of copywriting. Uh, I've said this before on many other Hangouts, but I'll say it again. Communication is the most important important thing, not only in business, but in life in general, if you want to have a successful and happy life. Because uh, life is about relationships. You've got relationships between 
uh, you know, uh, father, uh, uh, father and sons, mother and, 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 you know, mother and daughters. You have, um, you have uh, business owners and customers. You have presidents and residents, right? So imagine if you have the ability to inspire people to step outside their fear and to go out there, take action, to, to create a life for themselves, right? Imagine if you can influence people to, you know, buy this piece of rock, right? Because, to, because you tell them that this rock is going to change their life. Now, how can you be poor if you can do this every single time, right? And so one of the reasons I struggled and struggled was because I refused to learn the art of communication, and in, in this case, copywriting. And if you can master that skill, you can use it in your blog, you can use it in your Facebook posts, you can use it in your videos, you can use it in live presentations as well. And you cannot fail. So with that being said, guys, I want you to take out your pens and your pads because we've got Aza Avupre uh, with us and she is a master copywriter. She has, done, she, she has done this professionally for many years and she's written for many companies. Uh, she's also is the copywriter behind the Prosperity team, right? Uh, what I'm going to do right now is pass the, the floor to, uh, to Asia. First of all, uh, we want to know about, you know, Asia, if you can talk about <coughs> background, you know, uh, a little, share us a little bit about yourself, how you got here today, and then perhaps uh, after that we can go into the meat and potatoes if you can share with us um, your secret, your, 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 your perspective on copywriting and how the people watching can actually use your tips and 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 you know and apply them to their business. So go ahead, I'll pass you the mic. Alrighty, uh, let me know if you can hear me. Can you, you can. hear me? Okay, excellent. Well, first of all, thank you all so very much. Wow, uh, so much accolade. Thank you. I'm truly honored and humbled to be here with you. Uh, let's see, you wanted to know a little bit about my background. Um, all right, I, I uh, grew up in Connecticut, which is the northeastern part of the United States. I am the daughter of immigrant parents. I had a mother who barely spoke English. In fact, her English was not so good looking. So the girls in school used to make of me because my mother wife I have a mother who's so cool looking a mother who embarrassing to me uh, even basic things like going to JC Penney to buy bed clothing she would ask the she would ask the store clerk for a shit instead of a sheet um, but that being <laughs> said <laughs> sorry sorry, hey, my, sorry. Um, my, literally my mother has done that I've done that myself so go ahead <laughs> so, um, you know, going to a private all-white Catholic school in Connecticut, Greenwich, Connecticut, was certainly interesting. I had an Arabic father who also barely spoke English, so, you know, I grew up with the Spanish and the Arabic, and I was definitely not popular. One of my, one of the factors that really held me back was epilepsy. As a child, because of my seizures, I had to wear this huge, god-awful helmet, almost like a motorcycle helmet, on my head. And the girls would love to beat me up and, you know, knock rocks on the helmet because the vibration and the sound would trigger seizures. And they thought it was funny to see me convulse on the floor like a fish. So being the outcast, the only thing I could do was write. So I would literally write poetry. And I think that I started writing. Since I was a kid, um, I um, studied Japanese and international business with concentration in marketing. I did a lot of study in psychology. Uh, I took quite a few NLP courses, and uh, to this day, I'm always learning. I'm always trying to read and trying to expand my mind and improve because I feel that there is always something new to learn. Whenever I learn one new thing, I realize that there is so much more that I don't know about. And I think that we can learn from absolutely anything and everything that comes our way. Um, if there is one message that I can give to anyone, it would be, number one, whatever you did in the past does not define who you are today. That would be point number one. 
Point number two, we all have moments and elements of pain in our life and we truly need to pay homage to those painful experiences because they are the catalysts that will fuel our desire to reach higher and to set the highest goals possible. Uh, many of us have joined the Empower Network to earn money, but in attending the events we realize that money is not the end goal, it's simply the vehicle goal. So for example, you may decide that you want 30000 a month, well you can't really personify the 30000 a month, it boils down to what that 30000 a month represents to you. Will you be able to pay for your mom's dental implants? Will you be able to pay for your kid's college? Will you be able to save your house from foreclosure? And so that's exactly what we have to tap into. When we are writing to potential leads, we genuinely have to let them know that we're human, that we're not some badass guru internet marketer that knows it all, that we're still human and that we genuinely want to help them. So our thing is to actually sell them all throughout what we're writing, sell them on the idea that we are like them and then we, as we write, we have to carefully craft the writing so that they are closing themselves. And I think that that is the biggest service that we can do for people. Some of the emails will become progressively bolder and what you must remember is that even if you think you're being pushy in your email, always include something to the effect of, for example, something I include often is PPS. If you are pissed off right now because you think I am being pushy, please reevaluate. I am simply defending your rights to freedom. Allow freedom to serve you. Now, let's be honest, that's cheesy. That's like Velveeta cheesy. But I tell you what, that in and of itself really increases uh, people's opt-in rates for you. It increases people signing up. And it actually has people contacting you on Facebook and asking you more questions. So my point to you is the true secret and the true magic is to strike people across the head. Use humor for contrast. Use you know the, the primordial needs, food, sleep, and sex. If you can tap into any of those, you can grab their attention. Your goal is to read your copy and make sure that it can grab someone's attention for seven seconds. That is the amount of time that you have before someone decides Close your email and move on. Um, feel free to help you first. So please ask me questions. Um, I didn't hear that last part, and I think you're trying to say okay. that. Uh, questions? Feel free, feel free to ask you some questions, right? So. That's that's awesome. Now, um, I've, I've picked out a few things that you've actually mentioned there uh, about copywriting, but uh, I, I especially like when you shared about your past, um, the fact that your your situation forced you to sort of sit and write, and you've been doing this for such a long time. Can I ask you a quick question now? For somebody like me who have not actually write poetry my whole life, how long does it take me to learn this kind of uh, art. I would say it will probably take you realistically about a month. A month of trial and error is what it will take you. And what you want to do is you want to assume your identity. Who will you be? Will you be the spiritual monk conveying a, a spiritual message of hope? Will you be the single dad that's doing a united call to all the dads that want to provide for families? Will you be the senior citizen who is saying, hey, screw Social Security, start making a lifestyle because Uncle Sam, Obama, he doesn't care about you. So assume an identity and stick to that identity. And then you will genuinely find that sometimes you're feeling snarky and sarcastic and at that point do some split testing. Split up your email campaigns into two and see what gives you the best response. 
Um, some people are very serious. My copy is extremely off the wall. It is insane. I will give you folks a very crazy and even vulgar copy. Again, this is going to be a bit strong, but bear with me. People are inundated with emails, so we have an obligation to smack them across the face. Um, one email title, which was extremely, uh, extremely powerful, literally read, OMG, is Apple truly introducing an I touch kids? Question mark, WTH. WTF, I mean. And so when you open the email, there's a little cartoon figure of Michael Jackson saying, just kidding, but now that you're here, if you truly want to touch your kids' lives in a positive way, you need to learn how to start earning from home. And then it went into the actual sales pitch, and it had three call to actions. So when you're writing copy, make each paragraph no more than four lines. That's the first thing. Also, whatever your call to action is. So, for example, let's say that uh, I'll tell you, click here to watch this video. By watching this video, you will learn the true secret recipe. To now, even though the word buy, why, doesn't really mean to buy, purchase, for the people who are auditory dominant, subconsciously what they're hearing is watch this email and literally buy whip out your credit card and buy into this program so as you're writing what you want to do is you want to hit people with emotion you want to hit them with auditory cues and you want to hit them with visual cues so your next paragraph could be something like this video right here is so powerful and as you watch this you will start to see all of your possibilities that are truly within your reach as these are your birthright so that second paragraph really hits the people who are visually in tune that third paragraph is I'm so excited to have you join me and I look forward to experiencing your triumph as you're able to pay off your debt as you're able to buy your new car and as we are able to meet and hold hands at this next event. So I always say do three to four paragraphs. The first one, a quick crazy intro. Do a call to action in each paragraph, but hit the visual, hit the auditory, and hit the kinesthetic. Also, your actual links, you want to place arrows. So if you have a link, you know, um, you want to place an arrow on each side of the link and Statistically, if you color the arrows in red ink, it, they have a higher open rate. Always, always, always include a PS. PS, do you know that you tr are a natural miracle? Watch this now and see why. Again, you're just forcing them, you're increasing the chances of them looking at the video, and that's what you want. Um, because really most people are just programmed to skim through something but if you hit them multiple times on the emotional level, the visual level, the auditory level you are increasing your chances. Something else that I recommend is on your PPS start a joke. Did you hear the one about the guy who had a car that had hit everything with the lottery? Question mark. Stay tuned for the next email to hear how he was able to end up with a Mercedes. Now again, this in and of itself, you're leaving them with a cliffhanger. So even if they didn't buy, they're wondering, hmm, this is interesting. A car that hit everything but the lottery, they're going to conjure up all of these images that you have a jalopy that's falling apart with different colors on each panel. And this is what you need to do. Create a little soap opera on your PPS, letting them know, stay tuned for my next message. And these are the tips and the tricks which will genuinely increase your open rates. And that's, that's your job. Your job is increase the open rates and get them to watch a presentation video. It's not to close them to sign up, but to watch the video. In the body, you want to use a lot of things like feel yourself being free, imagine what it's like, um, what, will pe what will your wife say when you're able to take her on that second honeymoon? The job, your job in the email is to compel to the emotions so much so that they will want to watch the video.
That's all you have to do. Don't try to close them to buy right then and there. Your only job is to have them watch that video. Wow. So uh, ask there was me a questions. I want to be able to truly give you nuggets here. Um, so go ahead and hit me. Sure. So those were some wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, tips you've just given there. I've, I've written down a bunch of stuff. Now, um, the, the panel, guys, take this opportunity. Uh, whoever's got some good questions, just go ahead and hit her. Um, we, um, okay, we'll do what we normally do. And um, I was thinking we're going to go from, from left to right, or do you guys want... So if you have a great question, just just you know just just hit her with the question. How would you guys uh, prefer to do this? Well, I don't mind um, asking a question if if unless you guys really wanted to go yeah. from left to right or right to left. I I think that if you've got a a, a great question, a question that you you think you want to really ask, so just go ahead and we won't we won't do the left to right thing because some people might have a question they have to really dig to find a question. So okay. we'll give you guys some time. So Emily, I know you've got a question. Go ahead. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing uh, so much value, Asa. And I'm sure you know if any of you guys are watching this. Just make sure you rewatch the replay because there's definitely a lot of golden nuggets that, that was really being dropped. Um, if you are, of course, looking to, uh, to, to become a better copywriter. Um, now, my question to Aza is, um, do, what do you think about including images within the email? Oh, because absolutely, by all, all means. Okay. Definitely add images, um, and and here's something that I will tell you. And this is I'm, that's an excellent question, by the way, Emily. Fantastic question. Kudos to you. If you can, you want to really space your image to be on the right hand side of the message. And the reason for this is, as you well know, as human beings, we have the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain. So, you know, again, most people are programmed to skim through an email, but when you have an image to the top right, what it does is, as they're trying to read, it's entertaining their right hemisphere of the brain while their left is reading through the text, and it actually gives you an additional 1.7 second delay that they're going to stay on your email longer. And that's our job. Our job is to get them to stay on the email much longer. So definitely use images and use captions in within the images. Um, so, for example, I had one email that was subject line, tired of finances being tighter than a dot, 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 dot. And when they opened up the email, there was an image of a prom queen and the message underneath, if you are sick, tired, and fed up of your finances being tighter than a virgin on prom, you must watch this now. This is an urgent warning. Times are changing, and you get this more than once. Now, again, that's a little bit crazy, and some people, you know, the ultra-conservative menopausal women are going to think, oh, my goodness, tighter than a virgin on prom night. How fresh. <laughs> but who cares? Just roll with it. Again, your job is slap them across the face. I, I apologize if I'm offending anyone viewing this. I'm just telling you how I am. I'm pretty real. I love it. I love your humor. So and definitely, I think Emily. You Was Aza breaking off? Are you still there, Aza? I think she's frozen, I think. No. No, I'm <laughs> Oh, she's here. She's back. Uh, no, no, no. I'm here. Honey, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely awesome. use images. Use the images. Um, seriously, in fact, I, you know, I, and be crazy. Don't be afraid to experiment. Um, you know, I remember another email that I did that was fantastic open rate. It was urgent psychological quiz. Learn if
Aza, you're you're frozen. You're freezing up again. You are dot 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 dot. Mine was, you know, quiz to see if you are dot 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 dot. And so when they opened up the email, there was literally a little image of a quiz, and then on the bottom there was an image of cartoon testicles. And the body of the email said, if a quiz seems quizzical, what does a test seem like? Well, surely, if you already know the answer, this means you have an IQ of above 100. Therefore, this proves that your mother and father are not firstborn cousins. <laughs> so, wow. what are you waiting for? You are and people right now. Again, it's soft and it pisses people. You know what? It makes them click the link and watch the video. Make sense? Definitely. I love it. Okay. Thank you so much, Aza. No, thank you. Um, thank you for having me here. <laughs> And I love your humor. It's it's it definitely brought broadened up um, you, my whole perspective on on email marketing. Uh, you know, and uh, guys, if if you are watching this and, and you just hopped on, make sure you just rewatch the replay. It's, it's what she's sharing is definitely valuable, and I hope you you are open to receive this information so you can start applying to your business. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I I don't want to take up more. Of the, I have so much, so many more questions. But I'm gonna pass it. Uh, if, you back have, to if you have any path. great questions, just keep going. Ask I mean, them. We we just gotta keep digging deep. If you've got great questions, just keep going. Emily, keep going. Honey, let me say something. Hit me with your questions. Pretend that you are a guy and that I'm the girl you got liquored up, ready to take back to the hotel room. I am wide <laughs> open. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. Um. Uh, okay, well, I guess it, it still kind of links back with the pictures, but you were speaking about uh, in in one way of writing out the content is, you know, having different uh, three paragraphs. You mentioned that a little bit earlier, and having a link in between. So, what about putting pictures between those paragraphs too? Is that just as effective, or should we, or should the email be more specifically? Once you open just the image itself, with no honey, the definitely, definitely add image. Um, some of my emails have as many as four different images. People respond better to image, so definitely have as many images as possible. Um, I say have an image that sets the tone for the email at the very at the top right, as I said that. To distract, that it brings give you an additional 1.7 on your email. Have another image somewhere after the second paragraph, and feel free to have another image right before your PS. Images are golden. That's what people like. I mean, even as adults, let's be honest. Oftentimes, we're looking through a magazine. We're not reading. We're just looking at the images. <laughs> Men are the best at this. They're they're not reading. They're just looking at the chicks in the bikinis. <laughs> you know, so definitely include images. Awesome, awesome. All right, so images, paragraphs, um, captions, links. That's the you know I I I really appreciate you for sharing all of, all of this. Um, Tam, do you have yeah. anything else to say? Sure. I, I just want to add. You know um, what. What you said before, the copy that you actually uh, told us, that that just lightened up my my day. Imagine I, I imagine myself as being the person who opened up your email and I read stuff like that. I'm just like, wow! It oh, it lights it lighten up people's day. You know, having you know the the dog's you know thingy picture. I'm not gonna mention it, but you know it, it it's really really cool. And by <laughs> that, by just by just going off the wall. You actually uh, leave an imprint on people's mind because how many emails do they get in a day, and how many of those emails are actually extremely boring, right? They put you to sleep, and and uh, I think I guess by doing what you're doing, you actually leave an imprint in people's mind, and they're going to be more excited to 
to open your, uh, your, your, your next coming emails and, and stuff like that. So I think that was, that was huge for me and I'm probably going to use those kind of images in my email in the future. <laughs> um, Excellent. I know Alan's got Excellent. some questions. Uh, yeah, Go ahead, I do. Alan. Yeah, I'm actually being just being mesmerized by your words. Is uh, I do have two quick questions. Uh, the first question is uh, obviously with the, with the Empowered Network. You know, we have the amazing blog, um, and many leaders talk about actually you know uh, dividing about you know sharing content with your list, and also just you know a peer pitch in your email. So let's see if you were to introduce your prospect or blog or a video. How much content? Do you, let's say for let's say a blog first. So how much content uh, do you put in that email to transition them into the blog, or do you just put like let's say you know a few lines so that they can lead to the blog, or do you put how much content do you put? That is an excellent question, Alan. And here is what I will repeat: definitely use the cliffhangers. So let's say, for example, that you've written a blog post about, um, oh my goodness, on Friday night, the cops showed up. I was scared. They broke the neighbor's door and the ambulance showed up and I saw my neighbor being taken out buck naked and I saw her husband being taken out buck naked with a cape. I was so scared. Da 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 da. I, I went to the hospital room only to find out much to my shock dot 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 to get more of the story click here leave the cliffhanger there to force them to go to your blog when they go to your blog they were acting out a kinky fantasy in which he was superman and from the bedroom dresser he jumped so high he hit his head on the ceiling fan and lost consciousness while she was tied up to the bed or something like that do you see what awesome. i'm saying Awesome. Okay, that's great. That's great. And the second question is uh, again, you know, many uh, leader in Empower recommend sending two emails to the list. Uh, what's your view? And uh, and also, do you recommend sending one is more like a content-driven email, and then late in the evening is more about a pitch email? Well, you know what I like to, what I like to do because it's hard to say. Some people will say, "Oh, if you send them too many emails, they'll get irritated." And here's what I'm going to say: If people get irritated, they're obviously not serious about improving their financial life. I always like to do two emails. I'll do, and he, these are the best days of the week to do emails. By the way, Tuesdays are the best days. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Fridays, forget about it. On the weekends, you can send one just as a courtesy, but don't expect them to read it. So remember, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, those are the best days. You can send one on Monday, but if, you, if you're if you going to send one on Monday, you want to send it um, after 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm giving you actual statistics, just so you know. Uh, so it's after um, So for example, I'll time? send out an after 1, 1 p.m. East PM Standard Eastern. Time. Got it. So pretty much goes on the right. On the and the reason no production in a business in the in Monday mornings or Friday afternoons. <laughs> absolutely. That is correct. That is absolutely <laughs> correct, Howard. Um, so you know, I and also, I mean, here's what I say. I say send them an email with the pitch, and then at the end of the evening, send them a short, quirky email. Hey especially for you and if you can put their name in the subject line I cannot tell you how powerful that is so hey Howard special delivery just for you and if you can put a smiley face right there within the subject line and just say hey Howard I know you had a long day at work today I just wanted to reach out and let you know that even though I may not know you personally I feel that you and I are kindred spirits Spirits, because we both know the life. I just wanted to send you my best thoughts and know I am transmitting my special vibes of magical fairy dust so that you may have a great night. Can't wait to connect with you soon. Ciao. And you're not going to have any sales copy there except for the PS. The PS, you have the link. So, for example, um, Howard's Howard the badass 
watch how he transformed from caterpillar to financial butterfly. And so you'll have the sales link just in your PS. By doing this, you are psychologically creating the sentiment that they know you, that you are an old time buddy. And this is what will keep them on your list. So yeah, send out one copy email or one content email. And at the end of the evening, send them something short and sweet. It can be a joke. It can be just a simple little message. And Hey, dude, you know, we um, something like that. And again, what you're doing is you're creating that sense of familiarity. Make sense? Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. And uh, one last quick question is how much storytelling do you uh, recommend putting in the email? Um, do you recommend, obviously, you know, we know that story is what really drives that emotion. Do you recommend every email you should like kind of like craft a story behind it uh, uh, and don't just you know be like a bland just sending you know regular email but every you know what I'm trying to say is like basically should we spend the time for most emails to craft a story to make it interesting to make it exciting or you know uh, you know just something that really stands out. Absolutely. Uh, create the story and create a story that's going to pull on their hearts. If I know this sounds horrible, but what you want to do is you want to make either make them laugh their asses off or you want to make them cry like a Mary Magdalene. So you could craft a story to the effect of... Uh, let me make something up. Okay, since you're a man... Okay, you can make up a story to the effect of... I came home from, you know, a, a couple of years ago, I came home from work and my four-year-old son, Alan Jr., asked me, Daddy, how much do you make an hour? <laughs> and I said, I make 30 bucks an hour. And I was a bit shocked, you know, how does a four-year-old already know to ask about finances? So <clears throat> he actually said, hey, Daddy, will you lend me $10? And I was quite shocked and I actually scolded him. I mean, does... Does he really think that money grows on trees? Da 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 da. Well, he went to bed, and I kind of was curious as to why he asked for the loan. And then I went, I woke him up, and I asked him to tell me why do you want this loan? And you know, he goes under his pillow, he whips out the money, and he said, "Hmm, Daddy, I only have twenty-seven dollars. Will you lend me three dollars?" So the father says yes, and he said, "Okay, Daddy." Will you spend one hour with me if I pay you? You work too much and I want to be with you. Craft one of those tear-jerking stories where you know you're just going to hit them in the heart. If you know that you're going to make them cry like a Mary Magdalene, go for it. That is how you will own people and you I promise you, you will get them to upgrade. <laughs> Make sense? Awesome, awesome. awesome. Well, thanks. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I do have many questions, but I'm not gonna, you know, ruin it. But basically, I think uh, a few other questions will be kind of covered by the other speaker anyway. So uh, let's just pass it back to you then. Awesome. Um, yeah. Well, I know Howard's got another question. Go ahead, Alan. Uh, yeah, mine's kind of. I think she might have touched on it, but I uh, just want some clarification. Pardon my voice. Like I said, I'm not feeling too well, so my voice kind of messed up there. Um, but just you were touching on. Uh, not just on the emails, but on getting somebody to read your blog. You were saying, say, for an example, you'd write a little bit of the, uh, kind of like a feature or a little bit of a teaser in, say, Facebook, and you'd uh, put, say, a part of part of it in Facebook, and then, and then kind of, you know, leave it as a cliffhanger, and then kind of then put the rest of it to the lead-in for your blog to make someone actually go into it. Is what you were saying? Is that correct on how you were on how you yes. were approaching getting somebody to read the blog? Kind of like, kind of like what uh, sports subscriptions do to you know, like ESPN does to get you to read the rest of the story. Is you have to you know read the rest of the story, click here, kind of an approach. Was, was that basically what you're saying? Absolutely. Of... Um, in... Yes, and not only by way of Facebook, you can also do this in your email as well. And okay. and here. Here is what you want to do. It brought up an echo. You really do want to get into the habit when you are including content into your email. You really want to apply a couple of cliffhangers and tell them go here. 
and you want to do this if you're going to use this technique you want to use it for a straight set of seven emails and here's the reason why once you've established that written rapport with your lead and once you are able to command them to go to your blog it now means that they are more receptive to receiving, receiving your order so if you're going to use content with a cliffhanger to redirect them to your blog, make sure you do that for a total, a minimum of seven emails. Seven is that magical number. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Is that good enough okay. for you, Howard? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's it's actually right in line if you were, you know, anybody who is at the uh, TMA training is exactly in line on what we're actually doing with getting people to upgrade in TMA. So she's exactly online on you know what what is being taught in the exact in, you know in the method on on how we're doing it to get people to upgrade up to levels you know from what will they call level one two three four or above or however it's going to work. Um, you know, depending on your level of, of uh, participation, that's the part of the story you're going to be able to read. So, you know, you know, pay to play, basically. That's brilliant. Absolutely. Another thing, if I may, is play with your identity. Like him, he's got Million Dollar Monk. Play with your identity from derelict punk to Million Dollar Monk. Give yourself something that rhymes because it'll stick out in people's minds. Awesome. Um, Tam, did you have any questions? I, I do. I do, actually. Um, okay, just a quick one. I've got a few questions, but just a quick one before we pass it to Tim. Okay, can I, can I get a, a tip on how to craft like an, an attractive headline? Uh, absolutely. Um, you can attract, okay, do something on current events. So, for example, if, I, and forgive my ignorance, I really don't know what the political system is in Australia, so I'll use an American example. So let's say that Obama, you know, has a speech, something or other. Make your subject line, wow, Obama is, pro I, can, wow, can you believe Obama is actually proposing dot 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 and then go into your email um, and you do that because if they think it's it's current affairs if they think it's the news they're gonna open the email touch upon what the government is doing what Obama's doing and then of course you now offer the solution how you do not have to be at the mercy of governments or politicians and the whole you know screw them tell them to go walk up a hill uh, type of thing and you go into your actual story about how someone found the Empower Network and they recreated their life. Um, another very valuable tip is without you telling your reader, hey, you're an idiot, you're inbred from West, West Virginia, you can inc do a story to the effect of, you know, I just came back from the Denver event and I was so happy. Ironically, I remember Tim, make up a name, and Tim wanted nothing to do with the Empower Network. He said it was all just a pyramid, a network marketing. He thought it was all Amway. And he felt this, that, and the other. And identify feelings that your lead has and just say, but what I told him is the same that I tell everyone else. And that is you have to man up, pick up your skirt, grab your balls, and it is do or die. Either choose if the government is going to save you or if you say by doing that by by I told him just like just stand up pick up your skirt grab your balls you're doing it in a softer way with more finesse does that make sense yes I'm sorry honey am I too x-rated for this hangout <laughs> no, no, not at all well okay. the, the the ones that are Sorry. thinking this is too X-rated, I mean, they're wussies, and... Yeah, this is PG-13 for me. They're the ones... <laughs> they're the ones Dude. that won't click the link below, you know, and they won't join in power. So, 
But uh, do you have any other things you'd like to add to that? Yeah, be crazy, honey. Be creative. Do the stuff that nobody thinks about. Um, what do online opportunities have in common with prostitute dot 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 dot? And what you do is on the email, for example, now mind you, you can tell I'm making this up right now because I'm under pressure. Um, but when you open up, you have an, a pair of panties. Have an image of a pair of panties. Are you tired of your head against the wall following one guru after another? One month you might make a couple hundred, but the next you make 20 bucks. Are you tired of your finances going up and down, up and down like a pair of prostitute panties? If you are, <laughs> I've got great news for you. And then you go into your ta la 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 la. Make sense? Yeah. I say just shock the shit out of them. You need to be unique. You need to have personality. You need to be bold. Act as if you have the biggest peninsula that drags down past your ankles. Yeah. I I understand. I, I, I can't remember reading um, any emails, really, that are, are as colorful as yours, uh, the ones you're describing right now. I love them. I love them. Um, Thank you. That, Thank that you. That would have answered my question, I, I think. Um, I'm going to move to Tim. I know she's got a question. Thank you, Tim. Um, yeah, just a quick one, Isa. Um, you know, when somebody joins your list, what do you recommend as the first email to send out? Would you, you know, would you be personalizing it, telling them about your story, or how would you go about, um, I guess, getting them to keep opening up your emails? What Absolutely. Would you the very first email is very first email is congratulations. You have already proven that you are a champion. And then you go into the email and do something positive, compliment them, make them feel good about themselves. Um, and again, personalize it so it shows their name. Hey, Lisa, congrats. I'm genuinely proud of you for, for being here with me. I look forward to a long relationship. And I just want you to know that the fact that you are living and breathing right now proves that you are a true miracle of life. Think about it. Out of one million sperm, you swam faster than a Cuban heading over to Florida waters. You are a <laughs> badass, a force to be reckoned with. Now, hey, listen, you guys can laugh all you want, but I am serious as a heart attack. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that wow. first email just slapped them across the face with a compliment, something that will do exactly what you guys did. It will make them chuckle, but it will make them think, hey, yeah, I, I am pretty cool. That's your first email because you're the – unlike every other schmuck that does email marketing – you're complimenting them right from the beginning and you're saying, hey, I want to have a real relationship with you. Of course, you're going into sales stuff later, but your very first thing is not the immediate sale. It's the compliment, the, the communication to establish a connection, and you're, you're genuinely giving them something to smile about. And that's powerful, I promise. Yeah, love it. Thank you, Isa. You guys can see how I had so much fun with her on the Monday night. <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah, thanks I for sharing. Love, I just love the use of metaphors that um, you know that you're just able to do it like seamlessly. I love it. Just like just like David Wood used hypnotic. I mean, um, and it comes with practice. I'm pretty sure, but I love it. I love it. Something I got to look into um, when I write my copies as well. Oh, absolutely. If, if you ever need any help, just hit me up. You know I'm on Skype. Isa Avu, hit me You were cutting up. Did so you want definitely to definitely feel free to connect. I will help you out. Did you want to repeat I was saying that? that if you ever feel stuck, just connect with... Yes. If you ever feel stuck, connect with me on Skype or on Facebook, and I will gladly help you out in any way that I can. Thank you. And you won't charge us any money? No. You're pushing it to us. <laughs> <laughs> we got to ask, right? Um, awesome. So... Speaking of, speaking of, when you're talking about money, be funny. Seriously, be funny. 
Um, so you're telling people something like, you know, so you know, you want to make more money, so does everybody else. You probably think American money is green, so dollars are green. So you probably think green is your best color. Well, let me tell you, I love green too. And I'm talking about the green with the presidents, not the leafy green kind, ha, ha, ha. Again, it's funny, it's a deflection. And what you're doing is most people, studies show that their blood pressure raises whenever you are talking about money. So if you throw in a joke, you are helping their blood pressure to go back down. And again, they're feeling comfortable with you. Awesome. Got it? Got it. Uh, Asa, I, I just have another question, kind of like piggybacking on what uh, Tian asked uh, it, about the personali personalizing the email. You, you talked about the first email, you know, throwing out compliments, communication, connection with uh, the person on the other side. When do you think it's, it's more appropriate for, for copywriters to start getting into sending out emails on, of the sales and trying to get them into watching the video? Oh, that, that very first email, your first paragraph is, you know, the connect, the, the first paragraph is the compliment. The second paragraph is you're, you're letting them know that you look forward to connecting and communicating with them. And the third paragraph is letting them know, hey, listen, there's a reason why you and I are in communication. And if you believe in divine cosmic intelligence, I really want to share this with you. I am so proud of this, and you will be too. Just take a look at this, and you will understand how lives are being transformed every day. Take a look now, and feel free to ask me questions and include all of your contact info. That very first email, the last paragraph should be your sales pitch, and all the follow-up emails will be a story with the sales pitch, a story with the sales pitch, and as I said, in the evening, just a quick wish of benevolence, a quick wish for well-being, and in your PS, again, you've got the closing line, the click here, as your standard signature. Awesome. Okay, so that, that goes for the follow-ups, right? Um, when we do broadcasting, it could, it could just be about, sometimes just about our, 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 our life stories or just different uh, um, updates about, uh, of, of our thoughts. Or uh, do should we also get into um, pitching in the the broadcasting the emails? Broadcasting is very preferably broadcast the triumph of the underdog. So let's see if you've got a deaf mute who's missing a leg and and an arm. Uh, definitely send out the broadcast about how this person didn't let anything hold him or her back. Send out the broadcast uh, congratulating the underdog that has really risen above all the challenge. And in the bottom, just say, if you are ready to join our global movement of determined freedom fighters, watch this now. We are calling all applicants ready to make a change. Do you have 63 days? And do something that's a crazy number like 63 days. And the reason why I say that is every other schmuck is going to pimp 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. So if you do an unconventional number, people are going to be curious. Is this a special strategy? Why is it 63 days? And that will increase the likelihood that they'll watch the sales pitch video. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you, Aza. Appreciate it. You bet. Awesome. You bet. I hope, I hope uh, the guys that are watching right now, I hope you're enjoying the value that Aza is providing. All this is for free, and I'm pretty sure uh, she charged clients a lot of money for this kind of stuff. Um, if you find that you know you're getting heaps of value from this, just go to the comment box and just type in something. Maybe thank uh, Aza. Whatever it is, just go down there and, 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 and let us know that you actually appreciate what uh, Asia is actually sharing right now. Uh, I know Doug's got a couple of wonderful questions, so we're going to go straight to Doug and uh, uh, go ahead. Hey, Asia, I just had a question about using video. You're so good visually in your know, audio. Um, how often or, or do you use video on your emails? And then uh, writing blogs, do you use uh, video where you're actually talking to people on, uh, using video? That was that was my main question.
Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? You cut out for just a little bit. Oh, I just, the, Asa, the question was on, um, on your email, do you, you cut videos where you're actually speaking to them via um, video or audio? You're so good on you know, videos and speaking and expressing yourself, that part of yourself. Do you use that strength and use it in the email? And, and if you do, when do you use it? You know, what, how far into the emails do you use it? Well, you know, that's a great question. And I tell you what I do. I, um, <laughs> okay, promise you will not laugh. I, I'm a little bit out there, so I like to do a theme. And my whole theme is that we are on the quest for the unconditional unity of all mankind anywhere in the world. So I'll do a video, and I'll, I'll dress up obnoxiously with a huge hat, the, the gaudy makeup, and I'll do different accents just to make people laugh. And, you know, I make it like a little soap opera. If you're an Italian and you like to eat in the pasta, it's okay. You can still work with Empower Network and you can buy more pasta for everybody and you can buy a pizza for everybody. It's stupid and it's obnoxious, but it makes people remember you. And they actually send you messages on your Facebook page like, seriously, really? And then you start, like, for me, I like to work with people in other languages as well. Um, but for you, I would say definitely include your video and just here's what I want you to do. Make sure your video is no more than 2.34 seconds. Statistics show that that is your magical time, 2.34 seconds. So send them a message and have fun with it. So mm. just, just say something like, hi, this is Doug reporting live right here from the global territory of freedom. I just want you to know that today unemployment rates da 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 want you to know that today oil and petroleum da 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 gasoline has gone up. Wait, don't stress, don't pull out your hair. You've got a solution. So long as you can type, read, follow directions and you've got that burning desire, if you have more drive than NASCAR, click here and transform yourself starting today. So play with it. But whatever you do, keep it to 2 minutes, 34 seconds. Do Thank goofy you. accents. Um, like, seriously, do goofy accents. Uh, imitate different people. Have fun. Cool. Do you have any more questions, Doug? That, uh, that, 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 was the main, that, that was the main question. only um, other question was, obviously, all of this you're talking about can be integrated or used with blog blogging, too, when you're uh, writing a blog post, too. That's, I would assume that's a big yes. <laughs> you can use the, the, everything you've talked about in writing blog posts as well as emails. Darn Skippy. <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't know Absolutely. if there was a... and that's what you're going to do. I mean, and have fun with it and put it yeah. in your blogs, include it in your emails, use the cliffhangers. Cool, cool, cool. Well, those are the, Tam, that, those yeah. are the two main questions I had, so <laughs> thanks, thanks, Aisha. That was great. Thank you. Feel free to ask. I'm here to serve you. Thank you awesome. very much. Um, I, was, I was wondering if um, in the yeah. future maybe we can bring Aisha back and perhaps do a proper like presentation, bring out uh, some of the examples of your actual copies, and you know, and then we can break it up into parts. Because what we're talking about in this hangout is so powerful that a lot of us who are a little advanced in internet marketing, we understand exactly uh, most of the things you talk about. But for those beginners who are watching in right now, a lot of this stuff is actually over their head. So I was wondering, and this could be good for you as well. If I don't know if you've ever like put together a, a product where you're actually training and teaching this stuff, but I think if you think about doing that, you can use our vehicle next time to actually do a, a, a screen share and you can actually break down these, these elements, teach it to our students and team members and, and the rest of Empower Network. I think that might be great. Would you be interested in doing something like, like that in the future? <laughs> All right. I think she might be frozen. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yes. No, what a cliffhanger. 
<laughs> she's using what she's we using one of her techniques on us. She's using one of her <laughs> new advanced techniques, like the cliffhanger. <laughs> hey, Tim, I just wanted to mention what would be cool too is if we all started implementing what we've learned, and we could share some wins or breakthroughs that we have as a result of what we got out of it tonight too. That's really cool. Definitely. Oh, I hope she comes back quick. Oh I have yeah. Another yeah. Good question. I have another really good question. Uh, with that being said, guys, uh, on this panel, while we're waiting for Aza to come back, what do you um, think about some of the things that she's sharing tonight already? And what are some of your perspectives here on on, on copywriting? Um, will she's back? Oh, she's coming back. She's back. Her spirit's back, and she's back. <laughs> So sorry about that, my connection. Um, to answer your question, sure, I, I would certainly, I would be honored to help you folks maybe do a little cheat sheet, a couple of sample emails, and uh, why not? I mean, why not? We're all in this together, and we have an obligation to uplift each other, and uh, absolutely, please count me in. Give me a, maybe a week or maybe two weeks, and uh, just... I just get a little bit nervous because I am a little bit out there. Um, so I hope your viewers are cool with that. I'm certainly not conventional. I mean, when I'm writing for pharmaceutical companies or I'm writing press releases, I'm very conservative. But I love the Empower Network because you can just be free, wild, and off the wall. That's but right. Absolutely. If, if I can help your people, I am here. Awesome. Well, that yeah, that's that's awesome. I don't think anybody inside of Empower are actually looking and wanting to be convention, a conventional. <laughs> they're all they're all like badasses. They're all looking to do uh, stuff that, uh, that shock people on a daily basis. Um, uh, one thing I want to ask you, right, is where did you learn your copywriting um, skills? Where did you get it from? And where perhaps can our viewers and us go and find some good resources so that we can learn? Uh, copywriting? Well, you know, that's a tough question. I think I've probably read 117 different books on the subject of copywriting. I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive. I do OCD. Um, and I have literally taken pieces of everything and I have just tweaked it to what works for me. Um, I would say the best instruction I got which was uh, an academy at uh, the Written Sales Persuasion. And it was back at the time, and this was years ago, it was a $7,500 course, and it was an intense six-month class. That would be the one place where I learned the most. Um, but other than that, there are many books. What you want to do is, if you can, you want to pick up books on NLP. When I do a, a training class for you, I'll, I'll have a couple of phrases in there about NLP so that people can use that in their copy. And I'll certainly try to give them, you know, platinum, gold, diamonds, and emeralds for value. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend that people go crazy reading every book there is because everyone seems to have one opinion and the other, and times have changed. Uh, marketing today is different from what, what it was just five years ago. So I say be you, be real, and just slap them across the face. Literally, I mean, pretend you're a kinky, passionate lover that's a little bit into the soft S&M and smack them hard. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, you know what, uh, Aza, you don't even have to try to restrict yourself or from from thinking that the viewers might, uh, that you might be too X-rated for our viewers. I just love your personality and just, it's all about being yourself, right? And especially with it in power, mm. that's what's so beautiful about it. So don't hold back, like, ever. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, we we found yeah. that out the other night. That was awesome, man. I could just I was memorized. I could just listen for hours. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Thank yeah, you. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially so Emily, now, Emily, you weren't there, right? No, I wasn't. I had to get back earlier. And, and, uh, but I wish I could have been there. 
I, and I was back in my I was back in the, the my, where I was staying in the condo, and I kept sending Tam messages. Oh, I just feel like writing my blogs and being introspective. And I he he actually got out got me out at twelve midnight. That's when I got there to get connected, and I'm so glad I did. And that that goes to show you just got to constantly get out of your comfort zone, even with something like that. And you need to listen to your accountability partner and your teammates when they say, "Come out and party." You have to think of that as one of the uh, one of the income producing activities you're supposed to do. That's supposed to be right up there too, right? Uh, absolutely. And and you know, when, even when you're talking to people, just let them know. Uh, even on the airplane flying back, I, uh, I I got two people into Empower just literally by talking to them. Uh, one of the guys, it was actually embarrassing. I smacked him right in the face. I smacked him right in the eye with my carry-on bag, and I felt so incredibly embarrassed. And I tried to be funny, and I said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, but look on the bright side. Now you look like a manly man instead of a gay pretty boy, and I've just increased your chances of getting laid. You should thank me and buy me a drink. And, of course, he was <laughs> shocked, but you know what? He did it. Wow. So just shock the shit out of him. Really, that's the best thing, shock therapy. He got laid or he bought you a drink? <laughs> he actually, he, yeah, I actually got two drinks out of it, two Jacks and Cokes on the airplane. Oh. <laughs> that was on one of the flights. That's funny. So I was talking to him about it, and the lady sitting behind me got excited, and she jumped into the conversation. Um, but yeah, just, I don't know, be, be loud, be proud, and just work it like a call girl works an alley, knowing that you don't have to get on your knees. Just work it. Pimp it. Oh, awesome. I just have this one quick question, Aza. Um, the fonts, regarding fonts. Uh, I've Excellent. Been seeing, uh, I've been seeing a lot of different copywriters, but they use different fonts all the time. So coming from your um, expertise and opinion, what do you think, how do you think we should play with the fonts within the email? You know, that's an excellent so question. I'm glad you asked that. Here's what you want to do. If you're using GVO, for example, in the GVO system, it's font number three. In AWeber, I don't remember what font it is, but it's the third. It's you know, it starts off with the smallest font and it works itself up. So you want to start with the third one from the bottom. So you want to have a larger font so that people don't have to strain their eyes or squint. Now, let's say for example that um, let's say for example you have you know you're typing in your email something to the effect of do yourself a favor and watch this link right now your new life is awaiting the command the order is watch this link now that those words watch this link now four words put those in a font size that is one point bigger than the rest and the reason why is even though people are reading quickly, subconsciously, they may not catch it, but because it is bigger than the rest of it, it it's actually registering in their subconscious mind and you're increasing the chances that they actually do click on the link and watch the video. So feel free to use your command words, make them one point larger than the rest of the font of the body. Also, when you have links, use the arrows and color the arrows in red color. Use that. Um, feel free to use smiley faces. And uh, I would say use no more than three colors on email. Some experts will say two. I say you can be bold and do three. So you uh -huh. can, and, and also make sure that you use a little bit of the reverse psychology. If you do not want to make more money, do not watch this now. If you are perfectly content surviving on popcorn and ramen noodles and nasty tap water, definitely do not watch this now. And make the do not watch this out, make that in a bold red. Awesome. Great. <laughs> uh, when, when you do, like, for example, the, the okay, the, okay, I got it, Ashley. I'm sorry, I, I, I just understood it right now. I just went through my yeah, head. So just jumping on to what M said, do you recommend highlighting 
uh, like I, I seen some uh, people actually highlight, you know, like a like a yellow on on the text. You know what? I see nothing wrong with that. I think it's great, especially because a lot of people do skim. I don't. I personally don't highlight very much, but it's very effective. I think it'll definitely work. Um, the only reason why I don't like the highlighting is because everybody else does it, so that's why I'm not big on it, but it certainly does not hurt. If you want to highlight, knock yourself out and highlight. Definitely highlight. Use bold, use italics, um, and remember your one command may get one point larger than the rest of the font. Awesome. Great. Make sense? I'm also sorry, Tian. Did you? No, have one? no, that's that's all right. You go, and then I'll go after you. I've also noticed um, that in, in in emails and within certain copywriters, they start they they're starting to break up their paragraphs. As in, you know, you don't you don't write all along, but you they break it up. Is that still recommend? Is that is this what you would still recommend up until now, or has the, this email marketing Format changed. You know, I still stick to 45 characters per line. That's what I like to do. 45 characters per line. You, you know, I'll have the occasional line that has 48 characters, but I definitely do recommend that you keep it narrow. Yes, definitely do that. It, it's easier on the eyes, and if they happen to be checking their email from a mobile phone, that will only help you. Okay, great. Excellent awesome. question. Great question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, you so much. Um, is, is there a minimum amount of text that you would put in an email? Like, is it you know, if you if you have like a two-line email, is that too short, or do you have like a minimum of like two or three paragraphs? As a woman, I can't believe you're asking me if something is too short. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay. Now, um, actually, there's nothing wrong with the short stubbies. Nothing wrong at all. Um, you know, I, I even did something really crazy like, oh my gosh, Kim Kardashian chose to watch this because she read that it might shrink her bubble butt and it'll just have the link <laughs> and nothing else. <laughs> so, there's there's nothing wrong with that. You can do a short stubby. Anything to catch their attention. The only thing you care about is having them watch the video. That's it. That's all you care about. Cool. So definitely make it short if you have to. Um, you know, in fact, if you notice, I I focus more on three paragraphs. I very rarely do I have more than four paragraphs. That that for me is ideal. Four paragraphs, each paragraph, maximum four lines. I don't like these long ass emails that I get from people. Oh my goodness! I would rather play with razor blades and rush hour traffic <laughs> than read some of these tomes that people send me. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if they can't spell. Oh, that just makes me hotter than a whore in church. Check your spelling. Check your spelling. I cannot mm. stress that enough. And never end a sentence with the preposition. I don't know where you are at. What the heck is that? No, don't kill the language. I mean, you know, do it the right way. But still have a sense of humor. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. Awesome. Anybody Any else? Any other questions? Anybody else? Because the last two questions were actually my questions. I was going to ask those ones. But you guys, you guys took them. So uh, anybody else? Alan? Uh, no, I think I think I'm good. Like I just learned a lot tonight, so thanks. I'm just thanks a lot. It in. I'm just soaking it in. Yeah, same here. I, I love it. So, what Emma asked there, um, you know, the fact that the email you want to keep it in this kind of uh, narrow format, that was wonderful because I was wondering about that. You know, I've seen a lot of different people do do a lot of different variations, and and I was just wondering the same thing because you know, as internet marketing evolved, people actually are accustomed now to seeing those narrow emails and I was wondering if people actually when they see that they, they, they realize it's 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 a marketing email so they click off it. Just like um, 
back in the days when we used you know the personalized emails, we put people's name there, and these days you don't do that anymore. So I I was wondering you know if, if that um, was was changing as well. I say personalize and I say put their names in it. If you can put the name in the subject line, hallelujah. Uh, you know, something like, oh my googly moogly, Tam, did you know? Question mark, dot, 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 dot. Because you know what? You're actually going to think, wait, do I know this person? And you'll actually open up the email. Hmm. So mm -hmm. personalize it all you want. I would do that every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Awesome, right. So you, you still think that that actually works, okay. It does, even, because here's the thing, even if you think it doesn't work, the reality is we, human psychology, we are programmed to respond to our name. That's just a fact. So absolutely put it in there. Um, I even say put the name in the email if you can twice once within the first paragraph and once in the third or fourth paragraph. So Tam, as I write you this note, I really want you to examine why you currently are where you are in life and I want you to decide that this is your moment to break free unless you think you look sexy in prison rope or in shackles. Break free my friend. My friend. Tam, this one's for you. Click here. Do it. People love the sound of their name. By nature, we love to be me, 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 me. We're kind of like that annoying Jan Brady from the Brady Bunch. What about me? It's all about Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I mean, you know, we always wanted to bitch slap her. So, you know, definitely. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for clarifying that. Um, one quick, one other quick thing now. What, in your opinion, with all the experience you have, and you've done a lot of copywriting, what is the actual secret to conversions? How do you actually get, what is the component that allow you to get higher conversions? Okay. Um, you know what? Here is the God's honest truth. There is no secret per se to get higher conversions. Um, the, your number one focus should be getting the highest open rate possible. From there, not closing them to buy, but closing them on watching the video and then following up. And something that I like to do, um, and again, this might be a little bit more advanced, like on the video, watch the video and find a point that's crucial. So if there are no so and so is is talking about you know his dog needing braces, the fish needing swimming lessons. Find out is that at the three minute mark of the video, at the seventeen minute mark of the video. Jot this and tell people, um, you know, quiz. Watch this video now and complete this quiz for your chance to win a dot 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 dot. Stay tuned for my next email. So by doing that some people will actually watch the video because they think they're going to win something whether it's some really cheap crappy timeshare presentation or an iPhone or an iPad you're motivating people to do this and the next email okay did you know that at the three minute mark of this powerful video <laughs> here this former vagabond reveals how he went from homeless to a multi-million dollar mansion and include some parts of the video into that actual quiz um, and again keep probing people you want to motivate them to watch it and if you have to give them hints did you notice as you watch this at the seven minute mark isn't that amazing and they'll wonder what happened at the seven minute mark at the very least they'll watch the video and forward to the seven minute mark and if you happen to get it at one of those points where they show the rundown shack and now they show the new home it's gonna force people to keep watching and that is what you want you can't really increase the amount of sales per se what you can do is increase the open rates and increase the communication to the point that you become a constant longtime friend 
and they're not going to think of you as a pain in the ass. They're not going to think of you as a hemorrhoid. Yeah, they might think of you as a suppository, but that's okay. It's all about repetition. And, you know, by the time you get to the 10th email, just be bold. Just say, hey, Johnny, you know what? I've been emailing you all this time, and you're making me feel like, like I'm rejected. Now, I understand human nature is to say no, but I really don't want you to deny yourself. Fact is that you only think that you are saying no to yourself because no is the very first word you ever learned. You learn to say no before you learn to say mommy or daddy. But let me ask you this. Do you want to say no to your children and to your children's college fund, to your children's vacation at Disney to see the funky rat Mickey? By the 10th email, get a little bit more personal and just poke them. Poke them in the heart. Make them feel guilty. Make sense? Yes. Thanks. So focus on open rates and pretty much just drive them to, um, to, to, to see the videos. Drive them to the video, open rates, do quizzes on the video, and just keep harassing the crap out of them, but do it in a funny way so that they actually start to like you. You're kind of like that nice parasite, that fungus that starts to grow on them without them realizing. <laughs> um, did, did you want to ask that, M, or did you want me to ask? Oh, you, I mean, you can, well, yeah, basically, I, you can go ahead and ask. Okay, so um, we, we just want to know if you've studied any NLP and if you've uh, got any uh, books you recommend on NLP. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Uh, the Unique Sales Advantage is an excellent book. Um, there's a, a book actually written by, uh, by uh, Richard Bandler himself, which was amazing. Um, there are... There are... Specifically, there are tons of books on NLP and sales. Uh, what you want to do is, okay, now this has nothing to do with email marketing, and it's a little bit racy, but just to give you an idea. What you want to do is, believe it or not, you want to pick up books on NLP to hook up with people to, quote-unquote, get laid faster. And here's why, like the pickup artist and all of that, the the covert NLP, that stuff is powerful. So, you know, you, you want to pick up that book because it will literally teach you how to play with words to manipulate things. So I'll give you a, a real example. Let's say you're at a bar and you see this gorgeous cat and you're trying to do the bing bing. Um, so, you know, you decide <laughs> to talk to her and you're trying to get her hot and bothered. So you have to pretend that you're listening to her. You have to pretend that you like her. You're talking to her. You're doing the eye contact thing. Now, you want her to feel like she's turned on by you. So you can innocently ask her something like, hmm, so tell me, Lisa, what new direction do you see in your life? Well, what she's heard is what new direction, right or left, or which path do you see in your life? Subconsciously, what she heard is what nude erection. <laughs> Get it? Wow. Hey guys, I, I'm not bullshitting. I'm, I'm being so real, it's not even funny. And then what happens next? Do you need me to paint you a picture? <laughs> Tam the last, just use it. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm saying is the best books for you to master the manipulation of wording is to literally get the pickup books because you'll see how you can manipulate. <laughs> okay. Can you repeat that, please? Boy, this has been the most off the wall hangout I've ever been on. It's been <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's cool. I mean, this has been um, totally, totally um, unorthodox and uh, it's my favorite one. <laughs> no, no, but seriously. So, in your writing, your sales copy by watching this, the word be be why, what they're subconsciously hearing in their mind's ear is buy as in purchase. B U Y. Um, so you can literally play with language. The next time I come on, I'll have a little cheat sheet with some phrases for you. Okay? And you'll you'll once you actually see it visually, it'll click for you. It'll click like a camera. 
and you'll say, oh my gosh, this is so easy. This broad isn't a copywriter. Any monkey can do this. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we definitely look forward to your cheat sheet. <laughs> And uh, that's something new. I just learned something, so many new things today, actually. <laughs> but uh, I look forward to reading uh, that book. It's called The Pickup Book. The Pickup Artist. Pickup Artist. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you can do to manipulate people. But just remember this. What you want to do is you want to start off with contrast. You want to start off with humor. People relate to humor. People are stressed. Or, you know, there's daily stress. So if you can make somebody laugh, you've already reduced their level of apprehension exponentially. Then what you want to do is you want to hit them with an emotional story. And you want to hit their visual, their auditory, and their kinesthetic centers. So you want to hit them. Um, again, when I do an example, I'll show you how to try to maximize so that you're hitting both right brain dominant and left brain odd. odd Left, left brain dominant readers. I'll do my best to give you folks some gems and nuggets, okay? And um, if any of you want to reach out to me, I'll do my best to help you out. Isa Avupre on Facebook. Um, and well, yeah, you know, we're, we're all in this together. We're in this to truly make make a difference. It's really not about the money. Remember that. It's, it's really about the email from the slavery, the slavery society has placed on us, and we can totally change where we are in our lives. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, in all honesty, I've I've been there. I have been homeless. I you know I've been living out of a car. I I made millions. I mean millions when I owned my real estate company, my mortgage company, <laughs> my title company, and I lost it all. And uh, it, it it was quite scary. So the point is. Your past doesn't really matter. It's your choices today and your desire. And the most important thing is be genuine with your reader. Give them a piece of you, of your heart, of your mind. Try to shock them. Now, if you're a bit conservative and a bit prudish, well, try to shock them anyway. But really, shock therapy is what you need. Uh, I, I just wanted to... I just wanted to um... Uh, say one thing, like I used to drive a cab at the Denver International Airport in limo, and so I would use this kind of stuff with brand new people that got my taxi. Like they'd get in my taxi, and I'd say, I just want you to know up front, I'm a, I'm a blind cab driver, but I know exactly how to get downtown. I, I've done it so much. And you, you, you would see how people would look at me like, my God, I wonder if he's really blind, and, 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 and how does he do this? So it would just recreate this rapport because there was this overwhelming curiosity whether I was being serious or not. So I, I used to use this kind of stuff in my cab all the time. So I think what I got, the takeaway I got out of this uh, discussion tonight is I can use a lot of the techniques I used to use my limo in my cab, but just do it with my copywriting. So I guess that's a big takeaway. Absolutely. Take away yeah. So Absolutely. I just I just want to shoot that back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I thank you all for allowing me to share this moment with you. Uh, yeah. I, I hope I hope I have managed to serve you in some way. To the viewers, I I may not know you personally, but believe me, I genuinely send you vibes of success, of determination, and complete belief. Know and believe that you can do this. You can totally own this. And the written word is the most powerful thing that you will ever have. As it is right now, I mean, we still read books, you know, Socrates, Plato, ancient history. The written word is has so much power. And just hone it and own it. That's all I have to say. Cool. Awesome. Um, well, We've gone way past the hour. <laughs> what I'm just going to do Sorry. now is uh, probably gonna... no. We 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 love that. We love this hangout and the fact that you're able to still be here and and still willing to share. If we went for another hour or two, I'm pretty sure you're still willing to share. And that's what's beautiful and great about yourself. And no, um... you're smoking crack. There, I'm getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I thought I just, uh, you know, I thought I, I put it out there just to see where you're at. <clears throat> we were gonna go for another two hours, you know that. Um, 
<laughs> uh, and you're, you're definitely right. Your past doesn't equal your future. For a lot of the people out there watching, what we're what we're our intention with these hangouts, what we're doing here at Empower, is to empower you guys to today to start today being you know uh, regardless of whatever's happened in your past today, if you make a decision to live powerfully today, you can do that right now by just hitting the link below and lock arms with us. And guys, it's so wonderful the fact that you know. Um, we actually got ourselves away from the computer screen, took ourselves, you know, um, go to the event, and then we've surrounded ourselves, and we've met powerful people like Aza right now, uh, who's who's you know um, sharing so much value, and I am personally learning and growing so much, and there's so much resources like this uh, inside of Empower, uh, within the company. There's over 170,000 people. Imagine the kind of resources you can get. Um, you can get you know um, um, connected with and and you know uh, if you just you know if you just hit the button below get get involved and and you can have all these resources at your fingertips pretty much. Uh, with that being said, guys, um, we're just gonna close up now and uh, thank you for being with us again. Uh, go go below, hit the link, leave a comment, and uh, we appreciate you. Take action, start uh, living the life that you deserve today. Good night, guys, and good day if you're in Australia. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Arza. Good night. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. It's Alrighty. Awesome. Thanks a okay. lot. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, folks.